I wanted to make a very quick video on the express route maintenance notifications that we get. Look at them through the lens of resilience, what you might expect to experience as a network architect when one of these maintenance events or even perhaps an unplanned outage occurs. And we'll use this diagram to talk through it. Like I say, we'll touch on some resilience aspects of express route, but this video is not supposed to be an exhaustive exploration of all things resilience. Let's say you've had one of these notifications and it says, hey, at this certain time, we're going to be working on the circuit that you have. How should you think about it and what should you expect? Well, the first thing at a high level is it won't impact your overall reachability to Azure. We're never going to take down all connections as part of Express Route at the same time. But it is useful to understand what will happen during that time. And when you get one of these maintenance notifications, it will say, at this time, we'll take down the primary path. At this time, we'll take down the secondary path. And this is covered in our FAQ for Express Route, where it talks about what will be the technical impact of this maintenance. And it talks about things like ASPath prepend and BGP, and that's what I will dig into. Okay, let's start with this diagram to build it up. So hopefully, if you're watching this, you're interested in resilience, you're an enterprise customer, or you have Express Route in place for your organization with an element of resilience already in place. Probably you're aligning to a diagram like this, which is, I'm using multiple Azure regions at the top. I'm using multiple Express Route peering locations here, represented by these purple triangles. And then I'm connecting my network through multiple on-premise locations or multiple ingress and egress points into an MPLS network. So I've got end-to-end -end resilience throughout the stack there. And we can map this onto this diagram. So I've simplified our topology down to a single region here, but we can still have the discussion. So logically, we often talk about the importance of recognizing that the top box here is an Azure region. That's where my VNets are deployed. That's where my Express Route gateway lives. And then we use connection objects to link them back to Express Route circuits in points of presence in the Microsoft Edge network. And then notionally, we refer to these boxes that we connect to as Express Route circuit. So again, the Express Route circuit is an instantiation that lives in the Microsoft Edge network. You deploy those circuits to peering locations, not Azure regions. Again, a really common misconception. So for example, a UK design might look, you might have London as your first pop, which would be a facility in Slough operated by Equinix. And then you might have London 2 as your second pop, which is a facility in Docklands operated by Telehouse. This is the, the separate pops and separate regions for resilience throughout the stack. So we connect both of those circuits. And everything that I'm showing inside of this box here was what was represented on that previous diagram with the sort of purple triangle with those circles on it. And as we dig into one of these boxes, that's where we start to want to understand the maintenance implications in a bit more detail. So let's first of all connect our circuit boxes back to our on-prem network. Quite often, you're going to have one or two connections from your network into that point of presence. And then inside of this box, so inside of a single express route circuit now, inside of a single peering exchange, such as London, even inside of that single circuit, there's a level of resilience that's happening here. The Microsoft will have a minimum of two routers, which connect to two separate routers from the express route partner you're working with. This is what we're referring to as the primary and secondary connection in respect to this FAQ item. So what we're effectively saying there is during a certain period of time, we're going to do some maintenance on these MSEEs, these Microsoft Enterprise Edge routers. And for a period of time, one of these will be unavailable. And we're gonna stagger this. We would never take down both at the same time. Let's say this is the primary connection and this is the secondary connection. Let's say we come over here during the allocated window and we start to do some work on the secondary connection, our second MSEE. Now we don't just want to turn it off. Ideally, we want to gracefully drain the connections away from that circuit. And the way in which we're going to do that is by using ASPath prepend. And this is described in a bit of detail in the, the document, but let's add a bit of meat on the bones there. So actually what happens in a maintenance window is the routes that we are advertising to you. So this is AS12076. I'm talking about the express route private peer in here. When we advertise routes to you, which will be the routes that are coming from your virtual networks. For a period of time, we're going to add an AS path prepend. We're going to add approximately eight AS paths into the, the path there. So this secondary connection here, we're going to add eight times AS path there. 
And in the opposite direction, when the MSEE advertises your routes from on-prem, so when you advertise routes in this way, and they get forwarded on upwards towards the virtual network, we're also going to do eight times path prepend that way. So you've got eight X prepend that way, and you've got eight X prepend that way. And the impact of that is when your network looks at the possible paths into Microsoft, it's going to de-prefer the secondary route and connections will be moved over to the primary route. Similarly, when the virtual network gateway at the top here looks for a way out of Microsoft to your on-prem network, it's going to prefer this primary path because the secondary path is de-preferred due to that green AS path prepend. We do that configuration, wait a period of time, and then at that point, we will go ahead and perform the maintenance on this, bring it back online, remove the prepends, and then during the other allocated window, repeat the process on the other MSE router. Also, what we would never do is we would never be carrying out work on a point of presence over here whilst also carrying work out on a point of presence in the same metro area. So again, you've kind of got that assurance of maintenance inside a single circuit and also across multiple pops inside of the same metro area. Okay, so we understand what happens now during that maintenance window. Effectively, we are going to be de-preferring this secondary path for a period of time. What that means is when the AS path information is passed into your network, your network needs to be able to use that information to steer the route this way. Okay, what does that mean in practical terms? It means that the AS path needs to be a tiebreaker on your routing logic. So if you have a device that's sat here, and a device here, and a device here, and a device here, they are almost definitely going to be part of the same BGP AS. And what that means is you have options on how you control the routes. And a very common option for controlling egress from a network is to use local preference. For example, a really common setup is to say, all of my routes when I talk to this specific Azure region goes this way via local preference under normal conditions. You know, maybe that's local preference X. However, when I get the same routes for that region via a different POP, this path here via this circuit, that might be my backup path. And you might have a combination of multiple circuits, multiple regions. That's kind of beyond the scope of this video. My point here is, it's okay to use local preference in this way. We can use local preference to tie break one pop or the other pop. Where we have to be really careful is if you try and take it one step further. If you say, I am going to try and use local preference to run my single circuit primary and secondary connections active standby, that's something we really don't want to be doing if we can help it. So this, if that's primary and that's secondary, and you're taking in the same routes here and here, and you're applying, for example, local preference 200 here, local preference 100 here, you're setting yourself up for a potential problem because your network is going to be preferring this path to Microsoft, regardless of the AS path, right? Remember, local pref is higher in the decision tree for BGP. So if Microsoft comes along and we decide to take down this secondary here and start AS path prepending on this connection, we might be effectively draining connections away from it and telling your network, hey, you really want to be not be using this connection right now, and we're communicating that to you via AS path prepend, but your network is effectively saying, I'm not even looking at the AS path. My local preference is 200. I'm good to go. I'm using this link. That means that under a possible draining connections during a maintenance window, you could be sending traffic this way, and we could be returning traffic this way. And whether or not that's problematic for you is almost definitely dependent on if you're using active standby or active active firewalls and if they're clustered and if they've got any sort of state sync mechanism normally those firewalls are inserted here if you are using them and it comes down to how they're clustered and all sorts of intricacies there but it's one to watch out for and ultimately it's why we make the recommendation in the documentation that you should be running the connections in active active mode if you can we run them active active by default we let you consume them in that way in fact you can burst and that's one of the other common areas that's not understood about express route is if you've taken a 10 gig express route circuit you actually have 10 gig here 10 gig here so you can burst beyond 10 gig if you're running them active active and sort of working with the system but also as hopefully this video has highlighted it's got benefits for you in terms of predictive and deterministic routing in a maintenance window or in a failure scenario if one of these MSEs was to go offline due to an unforeseen event now the final point i'll mention in this video 
it's not related to the maintenance of the express route circuits but it is related to express route resilience and it's something that i mention at any point that i have the opportunity to which is make sure you pay attention to the availability level of this gateway so if you've gone to the trouble of having multiple regions at the top here and configuring them in the classic bow tie pattern multiple regions multiple pops multiple customer routers you want to make sure this gateway is as highly available as possible which effectively means you should be looking at using zone redundant gateways wherein under the covers the multiple instances of the data plane are spread across different availability zones and then that starts to align your entire resilience story throughout the stack at the regional level the edge level and the customer level that's all got that geographical resilience which is what most enterprises are looking for anyway if you had come across this video when you were searching for express route maintenance or resilience i hope you found it useful and speak to you in the next one